I wanted to prepare a speech because I have a message to give to people, a message that could have a huge impact, a message that could possibly change the world. But I spent too much time on my phone, staring at a screen that measures my worth with the number of likes and comments on my latest Instagram post. See, most teenagers today know more about iPhone X's new facial recognition feature than they do about what Thomas Jefferson did to help draft the Declaration of Independence, or how William Wilberforce fought to end the slave trade. 72% of teenagers feel the need to immediately respond to text, social networking messages, and other notifications, according to a nonprofit addiction research done in 2016. Researchers provide an average time of two hours and 51 minutes spent on social media every day. That's about 21 hours a week. What? See, these people like Thomas Jefferson, William Wilberforce, Gandhi, and Steve Jobs were once ordinary people like you and I. But if we stop, observe, and just for a moment reflect on what we've done and achieved in our life, most of us haven't reached our maximum potential. I want to ask you a question, and I want you to seriously think about it. What would your day consist of if you knew you would die tomorrow? I bet it won't be posting that Instagram picture and checking your phone every five seconds to see how many likes you've got. It won't be studying for that physics test either, but that's a whole other story. We need to press pause and only press play again once we know of that true sense of happiness and what it personally means to us. Because think about it, we're so caught up in finishing that homework and finishing that TV show and being done with our GCSEs that we tend to forget living in that present moment. Because happiness is what we're all seeking, right? Happiness is a sense of joy, contentment, or well-being. But is that all there is to it? Throughout my life, I learned when I look at a glass of water, see the truth of the glass. See the half full side. Be aware of it. Take it in. Have gratitude for it. And of course, be happy about it. But see that half empty side and question myself. Question whether I can do anything to change it. How can I fill up that half empty side? And if I can't, what can I do to accept it? See, us humans think life owes us something. And I'm being a hypocrite saying this because at the age of 11, I found out that my grandma was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. At that age, I didn't know what pancreatic cancer meant, but I had a feeling in my gut that it'd all be okay. And for a while, it was. The doctors were saying the treatment was going well, and she thought she was feeling better. But six months later, I woke up one day, and she was just gone. For the next year or so, I didn't go to school without listening to that song that reminded me of her, because I don't want to believe that she was gone. And every morning, I would just cry. Two years passed, and the pain was still there, but the thought of her came less often. It was seven months after that when the uncle that basically brought me up because my dad wasn't in the country most of the time when I was younger had been hit by a drunk driver and he was gone. See, I always expected life to be good. But when I lost him, I screamed and I yelled and I threw everything in my sight and I held my face close to the pillow so my mom couldn't hear me cry. But a few weeks passed and the thought of something couldn't leave me alone. And it was that no matter how much I made myself suffer, there is nothing, and I mean nothing, I could have possibly done to bring him back. So why was I doing it? What I'm trying to tell you is happiness isn't about how life treats you. Because everyone questions their life at one point, and the only way to get over that is to accept it, as tough as it has become. Happiness isn't about how much water was in that glass. It's not about how life treats you. It's about what you think of how life should treat you. Our thoughts, they're very powerful. What you say to yourself has the power to control you. And I hear people all the time saying, oh, shouldn't have said that to her, or shouldn't have spoken to him in that way, that was rude. But have you heard what you say to yourself? These emotions that we have, they're a true gift. They are your frequency feedback mechanism. And hear me out on this because it's really simple. You have two sets of feelings, each and every one of you. Good feelings? and bad feelings. Your thoughts determine your frequency, and your feelings immediately tell you what frequency you're on. 
Your thoughts are the primary cause of everything. So when you're feeling good, it's communication back from the universe saying you're thinking good thoughts. See, when you're at an unhappy stage in life, you can't change how you feel, but you can alter what you think. So why don't we use that to our advantage? Why don't we manipulate these laws of the universe? Think of your mind as a radio. If you don't like the song that's playing, all you have to do is change it. Change your frequency, and your emotions will act accordingly. But when you suspend your unhappy thoughts, that's different. At that stage, you're having fun. And at that moment, you think you're happy, and it's not because you are. It's because you've shut that radio off. And that's the problem. You go on your phone, you go to a party, or you simply replace your unhappy thoughts. Like, yeah, I'm not doing too well at school. I got C's in pretty much all my subjects. I don't have a good relationship with my parents. But whatever, I'm playing GTA now. But as long as you don't truly accept the truth, it will come chasing you. Your thoughts will return, determine your frequency, and hold your radio in their hands. So let's stop living in this alternate reality, this different dimension that we've created for ourselves, this dimension that we run to every time we need a sense of escape. Let's start being observant, taking in what's around us, and living. Steve Jobs once said, for the past 33 years, I've looked myself in the mirror and asked, if today was the last day of my life, would I be doing what I'm about to do today? And if my answer was no for too many days in a row, I knew I had to change something. And I know you might say, but tomorrow isn't the last day of my life. And you know what? You're probably right. But one day it will be, and you'll never know. So tomorrow morning, wake up, and let the first thing that you do not be going back to sleep to escape reality. Let it not be sitting on your bed and staring at the wall for 20 minutes thinking about how much you don't want to go to school, because your thoughts determine your frequency. Let it not be going on your phone and staring at that screen for 10 minutes to suspend your unhappy thoughts. But go up to that mirror, ask yourself the question, and then live your day as if it were your last. Thank you.